and welcome to Neophyte.tv, the technology show for the not-so-geeky. My name is Ben Friedman, and special guest today here in Las Vegas, Nevada, is Andy Walker from the TheLabRats.tv. Andy, thanks for coming on today. Hey, my pleasure, Ben. Good to Man, see you. First of all, great to see you again. We haven't seen you since Podcast Expo. Right. Saw your 100th episode oh, yeah. uh, the other day. Catch it. Fantastic. Uh, if any of you guys haven't seen it, LabRats.tv is the place to go for Andy's super podcast. How would you describe your podcast for the three people out there that probably haven't seen it? Uh, we would kind of call it, a, it's sort of an introduction to all the technology you already kind of own. You know, uh, we throw a little bit of humor in there. Teach you a bit about how stuff works sometimes, tips, tricks. Bit of a how-to? Bit of a how-to, yeah, kind of thing, you know, with a uh, um, yeah, little science and a little humor, a little, you know, a little bit of everything. You know? And Andy, for those of you who don't know, Andy is famous for uh, food demos, is that right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Food what's, demo. a, what's a food demo? So a food demo is when I was, I was a co-host on Call for Help with uh, Leo Laporte. Leo Laporte, sure, we've both been on that show. You, right. But you were the actual, co- I've been on as a guest, you were... A co-host. A co-host, yeah, way back uh, in 2005 when we shot out of Canada. and uh, You got shot out of Canada? <laughs> you got shot out of Canada. Is that like being shot out of a cannon? On a regular basis. Shot out of a Canada. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, so, you know, back in the day, uh, I did these, these segments, Extreme Tech, you know, how stuff works, that kind of thing. And so I said, oh, give me 500 bucks to build a big prop. I wanted to build a big transistor and show you how transistors worked or something like that. Right. And they said, well, we give you 50. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do with 50 bucks? So I went to the grocery store one day and I thought, well, I could buy cheese and whipped cream and stuff and demonstrate how technology works using foodstuffs and regular everyday items, right? Right. So the food demo was born. So then, so then I, you know, I, on a regular basis, I do how technology works, how a transistor works, how they build semiconductors, things like that, using foodstuffs and whipped cream and blowtorches and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, we should get Tiffany to you to do an episode using the whipped cream. I think that would be a big hit with a lot of our guests. Can I, can I, can I be part of that, please? <laughs> that would be great. Um, so we're here in Las Vegas, Nevada for CES 2008. For those of you who don't know, and maybe you can look back through our archives, see last year we did a big thing here at CES as well. This is the Consumer Electronics Show. It's basically the biggest toy store for gadget freaks and geeks and new technology. It is gadget nirvana. I mean, this is a place that's... Nerdvana, if I may uh, mix a metaphor. Right. Seven football fields full of technology here. The latest, greatest. Everything is going to be on the store shelves in 2008. Right. They show a lot of prototypes here as well as the shipping product that we're going to see. And all the big brands are here. Right. Now, yesterday we were at CES Unveiled, a big press event. I know uh, people can go to labrats.tv to see all of your interviews. Yeah. What was the most exciting thing that you saw there? Now, keep in mind here, we're still, there, I don't know if you noticed, but behind us here, they're still setting up. They haven't opened yet. You guys are uh, seeing what people would see like the day before CES. So uh, even though CES was last week, this is sort of like a, a quick behind the scenes look. But uh, yesterday we were at a press event, CES unveiled. What impressed you there, Andy Walker? <laughs> well, so I have to praise you this by saying that uh, now, you were drunk at the time, I understand, because it was an open bar. <laughs> no. It's nothing to do with that. It's all it's about, okay. I see too much stuff. I see too much tech, so I'm kind of underwhelmed a lot. So I would have to say there's actually two things that caught my eye. Uh, one was the uh, remote control beer cooler, which is like a bucket. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a beer bucket. <laughs> the remote control beer cooler. Yeah, it was good. It was very cool. Uh, and it's like a, a, a nice cool, a cooler for beer that rides around on wheels. I see. It's a cooler for beer yeah, on and, wheels. And you can control it. All right, and yeah. this is a so, USB, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, uh, anything like that? Well, there was a wireless USB, which is kind of cool, like a wireless display where you bring your laptop up to it, and all of a sudden the picture goes from your laptop onto a bigger display. Kind of cool, you know. Uses a technology called ultra-wideband. Mm. It's becoming more and more, you know, Belkin's got a product now, and it's, you know, wireless USB. It's USB without the cables, which right. is kind of cool. I really liked, uh, I saw there was that uh, a satellite device that could find you whenever you were lost, Ooh. which would be great for me and Tiffany, because whenever we go to these trade shows, she goes off somewhere, she's completely lost. I have no idea where she is. She turns her cell phone off. It's, yeah, well, in fact, informally, the beta guys that, you know, that are developing is called the Tiffany Finder. The Tiff Finder. That's right, exactly. So, you know, you push a button, and then, you know, a little beacon shows up on your laptop, and you can find out where she is. Right. Now, we are here. We're about 10 minutes away. We're actually at the Sony booth right now, getting ready for the big Sony uh, press conference yeah. that's going on. What do you think is new and exciting from Sony this year? Well, there's a, a, an astounding new technology that's sort of come. It's been taking 20 years to show up. It's called OLED, or, or uh, Organic Light Emitting Diode. Or Organic LED. LED. Now, not to be confused with organic food, organic vegetables. It's actually organic in terms of organic chemistry. Oh. So it's basically it's a super thin display. Uh, three, you know, I have to talk in American here. So it's like a, fr- a fraction of an inch <laughs> thick. In Canada, we say three millimeters, um, and it's it's got a really really high contrast ratio. So your typical LCD or plasma will have a twenty thousand to one ratio. You know, it's the darkest color to brightest pixel. 
but in this case it's a million to one, so it's like we're looking through a window. So the blacks and the whites, the whites pop and the blacks are like pitch black. And all the range of the color between the two. So it's just a, an astounding display technology. It's finally shipping in Japan now in an 11-inch unit. Uh, 11 inches? 11 inches. So, really, right, really so weak. small. But it's uh, but you know, 1750 US, I think, is the pricing there if you convert from the yen. Uh, so wait a second, so an 11-inch display right. for $1,750. Right. A little pricey at this point. But it's the beginning, so we've been waiting for this since 1982. Kodak invented the technology back in 82, right? right. So we've been taking, waiting a long time for this. They've had some engineering issues. They've finally overcome them. They're shipping it in Japan now. If it gets picked up in Japan and it gets adopted, we start to see it appear here in North America over the next year or so, we would imagine. Well, listen, I want to thank you, Andy. I think we're going to try to catch up with uh, Sean Carruthers and some of the other Lab Rats guys a little later on, and maybe we'll get back uh, after this. But right now, we're going to head over to Sony and see what's new. Fantastic. Good to nice see you. talking to you. Yeah, you too. We'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye. So one of the main themes this year uh, at CES is the convergence of you know, your computer, your, your home office, into your living room. And I'm here with Ryan uh, at the Microsoft Pavilion uh, to talk a little bit about home receivers that work with Windows Vista. So we have all of these uh, receivers, home receivers here, that are now all Windows Vista certified. Right. So wait a second, if we go there, so these guys are basically computers that run your home theater, right? That's right. right. Well, so what, it, what they'll do is they actually will connect directly to your uh, Windows Vista PC and be able to, to stream all of your music content right to your receiver. So it just reduces the amount of components that you actually have to have to be able to stream all of your music throughout your home. Before you even get to the computer, they just work as a home theater receiver Absolutely. to run your home theater. Absolutely. And they have this Windows Vista capability that you guys have worked with these partners to engineer. Exactly. Right. So these, all these receivers have gone through, and all of the certified for Windows Vista products have gone through a lot of testing and verification to make sure that it's not just a, that it works with Windows Vista, but that it will work well, nominally, nominally, with Windows Vista. Okay, so get so so work. So I have, let's say I have a computer upstairs in my in my den, and it's got a thousand songs in Windows Media Player Eleven. Mm -hmm. So then, how do I get that to play on my home theater system? You get one of these great receivers here, and it will. Uh, you plug it in, and Windows Vista will automatically recognize it, and you will be able to share right from Windows Vista, and be able and immediately be able to start pulling content to it. So would I set up like a playlist and sort of say, okay, send it to this device? No, this will be able to access your uh, Windows Vista computer and be able to see all of the all the content that you have in your shared folders. So down here on a little on the little screen, then I will actually be able to see the playlist. Exactly, and you'll be able to see the folders and the artists, and you'll be able to navigate all of your music the same way you would say on a portable media player. Same kind of idea. Oh, I see. Very good. Uh, now there's two versions here. It's like it's a Denon version and a uh, Okio Onkyo. Yes. So uh, just different brands. Different brands. Yeah. Uh, same functionality, just different brands. Any idea on the pricing of these two guys? Uh, I know this one is going for at around two thousand dollars. Two thousand bucks. Okay, good. Okay, so it's it's a fairly high end home theater receiver yeah, then. It's definitely high end. It's it's for the person who is looking for everything from one component. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff built right into this one receiver. And is it Wi-Fi capable, or do I plug it into my Ethernet? It is Wi-Fi. It is. It's both. It's both. Eight hundred two dot eleven n. I believe it is. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, okay. I can't. Well, probably G. Yeah, it's a probably minimum G. G. Yeah, it's definitely a minimum G. Yeah, right. very good. Okay, now there's a third product we want to have a look at over here. This looks like a, a an oversized clock radio. What is this? It's 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 uh it's all in one. So instead of having to have a component like we have over here, where we have to have a receiver plugged into uh, hi-fi speakers and all this, this is kind of an all-in-one style. Uh, something for a bedroom or something something where all the speakers are built right into it. So we've all seen this before with uh, various other uh, systems that have this, but this also has that same kind of capability that we were talking about before with the, being able to connect your Windows Vista PC and stream all of your music. Mm -hmm. And it will also do it wirelessly or wired. So you have that great centralized location for all of your music instead of having to uh, carry your music player around with you and be able to plug it into speakers. Now you can leave it all on your Windows Vista PC and be able to stream it all over your home. Right. So, so perhaps I'd buy this and put it in my kitchen or in my bedroom so I can access that content from exactly. my computer. Exactly. Yeah, and the speakers are built right into it, so it's all, all built right there, and it sounds, it sounds really great. And on top of it, I guess it has a little iPod dock here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's quite, got quite the, the myriad of every, all, all the different sorts of audio styles that are out there right now, right. from the iPod dock to be able to stream your music, and then, of course, the CD player in CD the front. Player. There. Yeah. No Zoom attachment yet? Uh, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they have an adapter for it. Coming soon. I hope so. All right. Very good. <laughs> and any idea how much this cost? I don't actually. I'm sure it's probably going right around five hundred dollars. But that's just an estimate. Right. Great. Well, there you go. Brand new. Uh, I guess music appliances for your home that's compliant with Windows Vista. 
You've probably been hearing a lot about Windows Vista's gaming capabilities. DirectX 10, of course, is a new technology. Uh, and I'm here with Walt. You're a gaming guru, I guess, at uh, Microsoft. And tell me, you were telling me just, just now a little bit about an experience you were having playing games and sort of what DirectX 10 happened. Like, well, it, it's true. Last Tuesday, and embarrassingly enough, it was with my mother-in-law. This is <laughs> play games with your mother-in-law? Yeah, well, yeah. My, my wife likes to make fun of me. But <laughs> we're, we're playing last Tuesday, and we were playing Lord of the Rings Online, which, of course, is based on the Lord of the Rings uh, universe, where there are goblins and elves and everything. We're going through this goblin encampment. So this is a, this is a, a network gaming a, environment. Exactly. There are thousands and thousands of players, and you run around you know, with your friends over the Internet, and, right. you know, and you know, we're playing our different characters. Sure. Half of the people stop in the middle of the encampment, and the other half keep going right. and are fighting goblins. And they're saying, "What are you doing? You know, come on! Why, why did you stop? Why did you stop? And why did you stop?" Everybody that has stopped had DirectX 10 enabled, um, and it was because there's a huge fire pit in the middle of the goblin encampment with smoke roiling out of it, and it was lit up from below with sparks coming. You know, and we just thought, "Wow, look at that! Yeah. It's that kind of immersive experience um, that where you really feel like you're in the game that DirectX 10 gives you." So DirectX 10 is a whole new enhancement in terms of visual. Uh, uh, graphics, right. uh, audio as well, Yep. and this is uh, only available in uh, Windows Vista, correct? Uh, you have to have uh, Windows Vista and the proper hardware in order to enable the DirectX 10. Of course, the content has to be there as well. We've got, we're showing some here. Um, uh, Crisis uh, is a DirectX 10 game, right. and it gives you shadows that are dynamic. It gives you, you know, isometric smoke, um, and it really just gives a, a level of realism that makes the so game. So three pieces, fun. Windows Vista. Uh, which has the built-in engine. That's right. A game that's compliant with DirectX 10. That's right. And then, I guess, a graphics card that they're also DirectX 10 compatible. Right? Exactly right. And, like, in DirectX 10 isn't just, you know, for those huge cards that you get anymore. I mean, like, this is a DirectX 10 laptop uh, here uh, behind me, and, and uh, I think, according to some uh, estimates, there's as many as 60 million uh, DirectX 10-enabled uh, machines are going to be out there uh, by the end of the month. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty common uh, uh, technology or piece of technology that you can get. So let's have a look at one of the games. Uh, this is so Crisis here, right? This is Crisis. And, right. And uh, so, I mean, if you look closely, it's a fully destructible environment. You can see, oh, you can see, uh, you know, chunks of sawdust and things coming off the trees. You can actually knock trees down. Uh, let me show you. So all that, all that is uh, done on the fly. You can see it hits the, the building in front of it. Uh, if I could get over to the water, I'll show you. Oop, I can't get over that fence. Looks like you're going to get fragged there, dude. No, no. <laughs> hey, is your mother-in-law a good game player or what? Uh, she actually is. It's a funny story. Uh, she is a huge fan of horror movies. And about three years ago, uh, when my wife was pregnant, she came out to visit us. And uh, I was playing Doom 3 and, you know, killing demons and zombies. And, and she said, what is that? Uh, and, and I said, all right, sit down, you know, have a seat, um, and I'll, you know, turn the lights down. I put on the 7.1 surround sound speakers. She started killing zombies. She's screaming at the top of her lungs, you know, and she's a grandma now, you know, and she absolutely loved it. That Christmas, she asked for a gaming rig. Uh, <laughs> so we got her gaming. She's a huge Windows gamer now, and, you know, and, and that's what makes, you know, Windows gaming fun. I mean, we, we really, you know, it, it runs the gamut um, from you know, the most casual, uh, you know, titles that everybody plays to the really hardcore games that lots of people play. And, and as, as the technical fidelity, I guess, and the graphics and everything really improve, um, you know, more and more people that are, that are into the, so there's movie genres are, are, are seeing, the, you know, like how much fun it can be to actually be in that environment. And uh, so it's attracting, you know, like a whole new, a whole new base of gamers. Um, well, thank you so much. So there you go. There's uh, DirectX 10 technology built into Windows Vista. You can play with your mother-in-law, apparently. <laughs> One of the big stories here this year at CES is getting content off of your PC and into your living room on your big screen TV. I'm here with Adam from Microsoft. Now, you have a lot of little boxes here that allows you to, I guess, interface with your Windows Vista PC, correct? That's correct. And in fact, what's, what's new about these this year is their combination devices. So they're built into your TVs. There's DVD player functionality built into them. So we really think that these are the kind of devices that will bring it mainstream rather than having to buy and go out and specially order a, a specific box to bring the content onto your PC. So let's review real quick. So built into Windows Vista uh, is Windows uh, Media PC, correct? Windows Media Center, yeah. It's available in all home 
premium and ultimate versions of Windows. So that's kind of like a PVR, it lets you play DVDs, exactly. you can get content off the internet as well. All the, all the multimedia content that you have on your PC and some that you can acquire from your PC, including live recorded TV like a DVR, yeah. is built into Windows Media Center and it's optimized for use with a remote control. So I, I know that the, there's a new MSN service, right, that allows you to get content off the Internet? Yeah, we have a new service. It's in beta. It's available only in America right now. But it's, uh, it's Internet TV, and it's ad-supported. It's mostly uh, short-form content, but it's a mix between user-generated content and, uh, and actually content from the mainstream um, content providers like NBC and ABC. And what it is is it's, uh, it's able, you're able to get uh, and enjoy content from uh, your internet connection without having to go through like your, your tuner or your or TV connection so that you have to, so to, in order to watch video. So can we fire it up here real quick? You got it. So as you can see here, I'll scroll down to TV and movies and then I'll back over to internet TV. Now, if you have a Media Center PC right now and you're connected to the Internet, this actually this functionality is already built into your PC. We've updated it through Windows Update, so you already have it. Um, in, in this example, we'll use a, uh, a Lost Season 4 sneak peek. Click on this right here, and you'll see that instantly it's on demand, uh, and it will stream directly to the, uh, the television here. And the, uh, the, the ad flows at the beginning, and after that, it's the content. On so it's ad-supported content. Yes, it is. That's correct. Get excited about the cars, and then we. As you was, I just did a real quick seven second thing. Yeah, that's right, and it's uh, and you know seven seconds. It can be long form content as well. Um, we have actually already logged over a hundred thousand viewing hours. Uh, can, can you can you skip over it? To the ads? Yeah, not this time. <laughs> okay, all right. So then you then you see the preview. Now this is all the pre formatted content made available through the service. You can't browse say YouTube through this service, can you? Uh, there is. You have to go through. It's it it, it goes through the the uh, MSN video portal. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, there is user-generated content on there, so a lot of the viral videos that you see in your friends passing around are available to watch on your TV. Very cool. Okay, let's have a look at some of these extender devices. Uh, maybe we start over with the Samsung. Sure. Well, this Samsung is very exciting. Um, as, you can see, as you can see here, uh, it's a small box, and it's got an HDMI input that which goes right into your TV. Let's have a look at that. Sure. It's wireless and it supports 802.11n, so it's, got, it's robust enough for HD content. What it actually does is it, 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 it clips onto the back of the TV like this, like a backpack device, so it actually gets out of the way and becomes part of the TV. And that's part of the, uh, the movement that we're seeing is combination devices, so that uh, in addition to you just buying a TV, you're buying a TV with media center functionality as well. Very good. And uh, so this comes with the Samsung TV, does it, or do you buy it separately? Uh, in this case, I believe you buy it separately, but uh, you're starting to see some uh, consumer electronics manufacturers building it in. For instance, Sony has actually got a new model line of uh, TVs where there's a firmware upgrade. That will enable users to get uh, media center functionality built into the TV directly so that when you go to your Windows Vista PC, your TV will show up as a connected device and you just cook it up. And you said there's a Link 6 product here somewhere that does something similar, right? That's right. Now, in this case, it's actually a DVD player and a media center extender. So uh, you'll see here that uh, if you just want the DVD functionality, you get the tray right there that everyone's familiar with. But one of the nice things is in addition to just being able to get the DVD content, you can get all the content that's available on your PC through your media center. So these types of combination devices, we think, will really help make this mainstream and acceptable to consumers so that they can get all the content they want off their PC and into the living room. Well, thanks so much. Sure. There you go. Uh, bring in your PC to your TV with uh, Windows Vista here at the Microsoft Pavilion uh, in Las Vegas. Well, I'm here with Brad Brooks. Uh, you are a senior, or you are the Windows Marketing Manager at Microsoft. Yes. yes sir. So, how is Windows Vista going for you guys? I know there's been a lot of controversy around it. it. seems to have a little bit of a slow start. So, what's going on? You know, it's actually going quite well for us. Yeah, um, we just uh, announced at the beginning of the week 100 million uh, licenses sold. Um, it's turning out to be the fastest growing Windows operating system for us. And it's been uh, quite a great launch. Quite a lot of new stuff coming out around it as well. There's been about a lot of legacy problems with the operating system. Dr slow drivers, you know, some stuff that doesn't work. You know, I, know that, I mean, our audience is yelling and screaming about Vista right now, and they're really being very resistant to it. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to deny that uh, we've gone through a transition. It's a major OS release and an update. And with that, uh, some of the older generations of hardware um, have struggled to keep up with the new technology we put into Windows Vista around DirectX and around some of the security features. Mm -hmm. uh, but any customer that's buying a, a new Windows Vista PC today that's been designed for Windows Vista is going to get a great experience. Mm -hmm. uh, what has been the biggest challenges for you guys? You know, anything that, that goes along with the major OS upgrade, which is um, transitioning the entire industry and the entire ecosystem of manufacturers, software developers, uh, to bring them up on the new operating system. 
and coming out any day now, I guess, is uh, Service Pack 1, which is always, I always think it's sort of a, you know, we wait for a new OS release, and then you got to wait a year, really, to get a stable OS. So my take is SP1 is going to stabilize Vista and hopefully allay a lot of complaints. What's in SP1 this year? Well, you know, uh, we continue to go through the process of releasing Service Packs to the public, and we will have a Service Pack coming out um, uh, this year, early this year, um, and that will continue to improve the experience for customers. Anything specific inside of the service pack you could mention? Uh, not at this time. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into the service pack around development, improvement, and stability around drivers and uh, compatibility with software. Thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Here you go uh, from the horse's mouth, uh, the latest on Windows Vista here at uh, the Microsoft Pavilion in Las Vegas. So that was CES 2008. Uh, all in all, not as much new stuff as I thought we were going to see. What do you think? Uh, I'm still here, by the way, with uh, LabRats.TV, Andy Walker. I'm still salivating over that uh, organic light-emitting diode TV. I it's can't o- organic, get you know. It's organic. Not, yeah. not like the organic carrots. Organic like the uh, you know, hydrogen carbon, organic chemistry. So we are here at the uh, Shadow Bar, Caesar's, uh, Caesar's Palace, having a, a cocktail. Cheers. Thanking ourselves for uh, doing a great show. Yeah. Make sure you head over to labrats.tv to check out what they're doing because it's uh, a lot of coverage over there, right? Yeah, we did uh, four shows. Uh, probably do a fifth as a, with a bonus round. Sean so usually cuts bonus. together uh, like a, uh, a, robots, a robots version of the show, and that's what makes it fun. And uh, we'll see you right here next week. Please visit our website, www.neo-fight.tv, for all the latest episodes. Send us a comment. Leave us a comment. Let us know what's going on. Okay, well, well, will Tiffany be back? Tiffany will be back next week? Yay! Yeah. Because you're pretty. But she's know, prettier. She's prettier. Yeah, that's just the way it happens. She's delicious. So from uh, Las Vegas, CES 2008, I'm Ben Friedman. I'm Andy Walker. And uh, we'll see you next week. Neofight.tv. You've got an extra 30 seconds. Take a look at this. Hey, I'm Andy Walker. Have you just bought a new computer with Windows Vista on it? Or maybe you've got an old XP computer that you upgraded. Well, we've just created an amazing new DVD. It'll teach you everything you need to know about the new operating system from Microsoft. It's called Getting Started with Windows Vista. In this DVD, there are three sections. One is out of the box. What do you need to do as soon as you start up Vista? Number two is Vista Essentials, things you need to know every day to make your computer experience amazing. Antivirus, security, all kinds of new features that Vista offers. And finally, geek tips and tricks, things you need to know that nobody else will have told you that make you a Vista guru. For more information, check out our website at gettingstartedvideo.com.